So now we're going to do a factor by grouping with six terms. Okay. Now remember, factor by grouping, we, we always say you could use it with four or more terms. But usually, especially in Algebra 1, we only do it with four terms. Okay. Now we have six terms. Okay. And it's still, you know, it's a very similar process. You're still going to do factor by grouping. You're going to group, have two separate groups and see what happens. Okay. Now one thing that we do have to change is we want to change the order of the problem. Okay. Right now it's in standard form and you know most of the problems we solve are always in standard form. We don't want to write it in standard form. We want to group, we want to make specific groups. We want to make it one group for all the odd degrees. Okay. So all the odd exponents in one group and all the even exponents in the other group. Okay. So we're going to start this by rewriting it. So I'm going to start with all the odd exponents. So I have x to the fifth is going to stay out front. Minus three x minus five x to the third. Okay. And then plus four x. Okay. So all the odd degrees, five, three, and one. Okay. All right, now rewrite all the even degrees. So that starts with five x to the fourth. Okay. Minus twenty five x squared. Remember, whatever sign is in front of the number stays with that term. And then there's no more evens, but we count the constant as an even term. Okay, degree of zero, I guess. Whoops, no x. All right, now we're going to do our normal factor by grouping steps. We're going to make two groups. Okay, now usually when we have four terms, our two groups involve two terms each. But now we're going to have three terms in each group. So we'll group the first three terms and we'll group the last three terms. Okay. And it's the same factor by grouping steps. We're going to try and find a GCF, a greatest common factor from each group. Okay. The first group, okay. Well, they all have an X term. So we could take it definitely take out an X and uh, that's it. No more, no, you know, we got a, a one, a five and a four that don't have any common factors. So this first group, we're just going to take out x. Okay. Now what's left over? Well, you go to each of the three terms, you can take away 1x. That's going to leave x to the fourth power minus 5x squared plus 4. Okay. All right, and then you go to the next group and try and find a GCF there. The greatest common factor in the next group, you have... Well, they don't all have an x, so we can't take out any variables. Uh, but they all are divisible by 5, so we're going to factor out a 5. Okay. So go to each term and take away a 5. We're going to divide each number by 5. That leaves behind x to the 4th minus 5x squared plus 4. Okay. All right, well, if you notice, and remember this should always happen in a factor by grouping problem, after you take out the GCF, the leftovers are the same. Okay. So we can factor that out. So we're going to factor out the whole polynomial x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4. And what's left over is well you have an x from the first group and you have the 5 from the second so x plus 5 okay all right so that x plus 5 that's a linear binomial that's you know unfactorable that's just going to hang out for the rest of the problem okay all right well how do we deal with this trinomial it is a trinomial there's three terms but it's not a quadratic like we're used to okay well we could just treat it like a quadratic you know the trinomial that should Factor into two binomials, right? So why don't we put our two binomials up? Okay. And like I said, this x plus 5 is always just going to kind of hang out in the back here for the rest of the problem. All right, well, if you notice, we don't. there's no a. There's no the number in front, it's just 1. Okay, whenever you have a 1 in front of your trinomial, the, those are the easy problems. Okay, we just have to find two numbers that are going to multiply to 4 and add to negative 5. Okay, 
Well, the only way you multiply to a positive and add to a negative is, negative is if both are negative. And negative 1 and negative 4 is going to fit that. Okay. So we'll have negative 1 and negative 4 in the last slots. Okay. Okay. Now, usually we have x and x here because x times x gives us x squared. But we don't need x squared anymore. We need x to the fourth power. So instead of having x and x, we're going to have x to the second and x to the second. Okay. Because those are the only things that are going to multiply to x to the fourth. Okay. Now if you want to do a quick FOIL in your head, x to the second times x to the second is x to the fourth. This will be negative 4x squared, negative 1x squared. Combine those terms to get negative 5x squared. And then negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Okay, so this works. All right, so this looks factored to us. We have, you know, a bunch of binomials multiplied together. But we're not done yet. Okay. If you notice something special about these two binomials, you have x squared minus 4 and x squared minus 1. Okay. Whenever there's two terms, there's a chance for that to be a difference of squares, one of those special patterns. And in this case, it is. They're both, they both have two terms. Each term is a perfect square. And you're subtracting. So that's a difference of squares. So we could factor both of these terms again. Oops. Okay. So the x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. Okay. And x squared minus 1 is also a difference of squares. People forget that 1 is a perfect square. Okay. So we're going to factor that using the difference of square pattern. Well, the difference of square pattern is you're always going to have two binomials with the same numbers but opposite signs. So we're going to have x plus 2, okay, because the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 4 is 2, and then we're also going to have x minus 2. Okay. Now for the second one, also a difference of squares, same thing. We're going to have two binomials with the same numbers but opposite signs. So the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 1 is 1. So we'll have x plus 1, x minus 1. And then again, that first factor, x plus 5, is just hanging out, enjoying the ride. And that is fact. That's fully factored. You have five linear binomials. There's nothing else to do with this. So again, factor by grouping is a little more versatile than we thought. Okay, you could do it with six terms in this case. Okay. Now again, that's not an algebra one problem. I would never give that to my algebra one class, but it's the same, you know, it's the same tools we learn in algebra one, just applied to a more difficult problem.